Our next topic is temperature stresses in composite parts. Let us say we have composite bar. Two bars are there like this. This is one bar and this is another bar and these are in composite to each other. Say one bar is of <coughs> copper and other bar is of steel. And we increase the temperature of the composite bar by a certain temperature degree centigrade, suppose T degree centigrade. So combined section of this bar is increased by T degree centigrade, right? And we should know that the alpha of copper is greater than alpha of steel. Coefficient of thermal expansion of copper is greater than coefficient of thermal expansion of steel. It means if the, these two bars are not in composite and if they are freely expand, then the copper would have more expansion, free expansion than steel. So this is the free expansion of copper. If this steel is not attached to it, this is the free expansion of copper. Let us number it by 1 or 2 so that it may be easy to uh, write the subscript. So this is L. Suppose L is the length of this bar. L. L is the length of copper as well as steel. So L. Alpha T. So alpha of copper we have taken 1. Alpha of copper is taken 1. T is the temperature rise. So this is L alpha 1 T is a free expansion if we allow this copper to freely expand and when it is not connected to copper and steel. Now, what is a free expansion in steel? As alpha of steel is lower than alpha of copper, there will be less free expansion if this is steel is allowed freely. So this will be the expansion, free expansion in steel, L alpha 2 T. But these are rigid bar and these are uh, connected to each other composite to make it composite section. So they will expand because they are connected to each other. They will expand or contract in a similar way, manner. Same dimensions, same uh, uh, dimensions will be achieved after expansion. So it means that copper will not be able to expand to this much. It will be expanded lesser than what it can be freely expand and because it is attached to steel uh, and because steel is attached to copper, steel will be ab able to expand more because copper will uh, try to uh, pull it towards itself. So we will get an intermediate state, intermediate state where we will get the actual expansion of the steel up to this point. So this is the more expansion. This is the additional expansion in the steel due to uh, attached with the copper and this much, this much is the contraction in the copper. This much is the contraction in the copper due to because it is attached to steel, right? So it means there is some force, there is some force developed in this material this force is supposed bigger because we are taking copper as one so this is p1 which is trying to compress this copper due to this steel and some compressive stress will be developed in this material copper so if we show the stress this will be compressive in copper this is copper material right and some more expansion is obtained in this say this is delta 2 and this contraction is say delta 1. So delta 1 is the contraction in this copper and delta 2 is the expansion in the steel due to attachment of these two right. So in steel there is tensile stress developed because there is some expansion this much delta 2. 
tensile stress will be developed in this steel. This is our steel. So this is the case. So free expansion of the copper was L alpha 1 T. Free expansion of the steel was L alpha 2 T. But because, but because these two are attached to each other, so steel will try to pull it towards itself and there will be contraction, some compression in copper and compressive stress will be developed in the material of copper. And st in steel, due to copper, because it attached to copper, there is some extension. Copper will try to expand it more because alpha of copper is greater than alpha of steel. So it will try to pull it towards itself and there will be some extension in this uh, steel. And suppose some force, we can say some force is uh, acting on the steel which is causing some expansion, some elongation in steel and this is P2. So tensile stress developed in the steel and compressive stress developed in the copper, right? So actual, actual length, actual length, this length of the steel is L alpha 2 plus delta 2, say this is delta L2 and actual length which is expansion, actual uh, length of the copper after uh, temperature rise is this is this much length and both delta L2 and delta L1 are same. This is the actual length which is expanded delta L1 and these two are same because both are connected to each other as a composite section. So delta L1 should be equal to delta L2, this is the first equation. And what is delta L2? L alpha L alpha 2, alpha 2 T, this is a free expansion plus additional expansion due to the composite with copper, right? So delta L2 will be equal to L alpha 2 T plus delta T2. And what is the uh, actual length obtained after temperature rise of copper that is delta L1. This is free expansion L alpha T minus this part, this part, right, delta 1, this is delta 1. So this will be equal to L alpha 1 T minus delta 1. So this is about copper, where is some contraction uh, compared to free expansion, free expansion minus contraction and this is the expansion, free expansion plus additional expansion due to composite section, right? Now, how this delta 1 or delta 2 is achieved? This delta 2 is due to this P2 and this delta 1 is due to this P1 and this from where this P1 and P2 came, we have not applied any external force. Whatever the force, tensile force, this tensile and this compressive are obtained in this material, these are from the internal sources due to the compression in copper and the tensile forces are developed in the steel or in the reverse way due to tension in the steel, compressive stresses are developed in the copper. So no force are came from outside, these all the force came from inside, so we can write that this tensile force and this this tensile force and this compressive force should be equal. So we can write P1 should be equal to P2 because of no external force applied as no external force applied. And what is force? Stress multiplied by area. So sigma 1 A1 should be equal to sigma 1 a1 should be equal to sigma 2 a2. So this equation should be remembered. We will use this equation somewhere. Now delta 1. What is delta 1? From where this delta 1 came? From where this delta 1 contraction in copper came? We can say that say there is some load developed in the material which is compressing this, uh, this material and from the basics we know that that delta L is equal to PL upon AE. 
PL upon A. So this delta 2, this delta 1, delta 1 should be equal to force which is P1 upon L upon AE. Similarly, this is a contraction due to this compressive force. In steel, there is some tensile force developed within the material and this tensile force is causing some expansion delta 2 in the material. Similarly, so delta 2 should be equal to P2L upon AE. Suppose area of uh, the steel is A2 and area of copper is A1. Now we can put here and what is force upon area? This is stress. Force upon area is stress. In these two, two terms, delta 1 and delta 2, there is a term stress. So we can write from here, we can write L alpha 1 T minus this is stress. So we can write delta 1 can be written as sigma 1 L upon E and that should be equal to L alpha T, L alpha 2 T plus this is sigma, sigma 2, stress developed in steel, L upon E. From here we can write, what we can write is, uh, sigma 1 L upon E can be taken from this side and this can be taken from this side. So we can write sigma 1 L upon E plus sigma 2 L upon E must be equal to L alpha 1 minus alpha 2 when it will come here this will be alpha 1 minus alpha 2 into t l will be cancelled out if l is same for both the bars so sigma 1 upon e plus sigma 2 upon e will be equal to alpha 1 minus alpha 2 into t so this is very important equation for composite sections this is equation number 2 and this is equation number 1. This is equation number 1. From here you can write sigma 1 upon sigma 2 will be equal to sigma 1 upon sigma 2 equal to A2 by A1. So this is equation number 2, 1. So this is one equation, this is two equation. We, uh, our aim was to find out the stresses developed in these materials. So by this you can find out sigma 1 and sigma 2, two unknowns are there, sigma 1 and sigma 2. By these two equations you can find out the stresses in copper and stress in steel.